stays. It's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Mark from the States, how are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you for coming. Um, hope everybody's settling in with their new election or with their results of the new uh, prime minister taking over. We've uh, sent out requests uh, to uh, get a little more depth look on uh, the election. Unfortunately, a few have returned uh, wishing not for us to react to it, and I'm okay with that. Uh, that is their prerogative. I appreciate them letting me know, but we're still trying. We'll get some uh, videos up uh, on it at some point. But in the meantime, we're going to check in with Darren over at WC21 Productions Limited. Um, the link to his video, this video, and to his channel will be in the description. So please go over and support uh, his work. I love his videos. I really do. We haven't seen one in a little while from him. So I'm excited to see this. This one's called Pub Landlord is King on this island. And the title is such a mysterious one. I just had to, I had to see it. And uh, so some of you may know about this, but... I guarantee there's probably some people who had no idea. So I just love the way Darren presents the video. I re I just love the just the style he uses. And it's just, it's all this like quirky subjects that, you know, isn't something that you can go on YouTube and just find a ton of. It's just, so that's what I enjoy about his channel. So please go over to his and just support it. Like, subscribe. Do the things that you all do that are amazing and uh, help him out. Uh, I am blessed that he is giving uh, the okay for us to learn from his videos. And it's just, he's a just a wonderful person. So I encourage all of you to get over there and support him. Uh, before we get into today's video, uh, I just want to remind you that I have a post up on our channel's community tab. Um, there, you can leave a question for Cooper. I'm going to, uh, essentially interview him on, um, I don't know, either Saturday, Sunday, something like that. And so I'll take all your questions. We've gotten a few in. You can also email me a question at, uh, the link will be in the description below. Um, also, uh, I think I'm going to do a live stream on Sunday. I don't know exactly what time. Just stay tuned to our channel. You'll see the actual time. i got to figure out if there's going to be a football match. I don't want to, you know, it's getting down to the nitty-gritty, I believe. that's uh, We're going to have uh, some semifinals. I, or maybe those happen before then. I don't know. But I haven't looked at the schedule. But I don't want to interfere with that. That's pretty important. Uh, so England is taking on the Netherlands in a big match. Uh, with that said, let's get into uh, the book, shall we? Um, so feel free to say stop, stop. Ooh, right away you said stop. Okay. It's like uh, this one's called uh, Paving the Way. And what is it? It's Roman flooring where all hollows by the tower. That's EC3R 5B. Gonna need the old trusty flash flashlight here. It's 5BJ St. Bride's Church EC4Y 8AU. The Romans founded London or Lond Londoninium in around AD 47 and the city remained under Roman rule until around A.D. 410. In modern times, due to the ground level rising over the centuries, with each generation's detritus, detritus, how do you pronounce that? I've never seen that word before. D-E-T-R-I-T-U-S. This is what I love about this book. I learn new words. Um... Detritus and debris, I know that word, 
so let me just start that sentence over. Uh, centuries with each generation's detritus and debris, sections of Roman flooring or pavement are often uncovered far below the surface in church crypts. You can see a section of tessellated flooring from a domestic dwelling in the crypt of all hollows by the tower and a section of Roman pavement in the crypt of St. Bride's Church. Romans founded London uh, in around AD 47. The city remained under Roman rule until around AD 410. In modern times, due to the ground level rising over the centuries with each generation's detritus, and debris, sections of Roman flooring or pavement are often uncovered far below the surface in church crypts. You can see a section of desolated floor from a domestic dwelling in the crypt of all hollows by the tower and a section of Roman pavement in the crypt of St. Bride's Church. Um, has anybody been seen this? That's interesting. I, I knew about, of course... Romans and the the name of London um, the Roman version of it anyway uh, and you, of course there's going to be some remnants from from those times I just find it fascinating that the thing I, I get from that little tidbit and that I've seen over in other videos and whatnot is it's not so much right it, it doesn't the, the previous civilization just doesn't get torn down and moved out. It's you built in on top of civilization. So it just, the, the more you dig down, you just go, it's like going through time. And it's just layers and layers and layers of generations on top of one another. Whereas, you know, you think, oh, one, one uh, you know, faction of people come in and they get moved on for whatever reason. <laughs> and you just think everything gets brought down to the ground and removed. No, it's built on top. It, they, they do level buildings or whatever, but then just things get built on top of it. And, you know, over the centuries, uh, you have layers of just history. And I find that very fascinating. Uh, I'm... As you know, the, my country is not that old, so we don't have such things to the degree you do. Of course, you'll find examples here, but uh, um, nothing like you would see, say, in London or any of the ancient Roman towns that are uh, have been settled over by many different peoples. Uh, so I find that very fascinating, but uh, let me know if you've actually seen any of that or if there's other um, examples of that. Um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Uh, all right, come sit on this big fake couch. Like I said, let's get into today's video. Um, Darren is going to explain what the heck pub landlord is king on this island let's do it believe me if i told you that there was an island in the uk where charles iii is not the sovereign king and uh, the king is actually the pub landlord well this week we're looking oh. into this wonderful oddity on peel island that you can see over there and we'll be trying to work out if this is an ancient tradition dating back to medieval times or it's no older than about 170 years being dreamt up by some drunkard Victorians in oil skins. How bizarre. Rocking the shorts today, Aaron. Wonderful. Even here, you have to queue. Okay, I'll have to come back with you, sir. All right, no All worries. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you 
strategic change of goals. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Darren. I want to see. So you're looking off here uh, on this right here, uh, RNLI, uh, the lifeboat service. Uh, I always find those to be interesting. Um, but you do see the big right here. You, you notice the this is where they launch the boat, right? Wow, look at that. Sorry, <laughs> I just found that to be interesting. Wow. Castle should be about it. Even a castle there. I hope Rishi Sunak didn't see me coming across in that small boat. Oh. <laughs> he, he's not now. Don't you worry. Ship in. Welcome to the ship in on Peel Island. I'm not entirely sure what Tweedy yeah. would make of it. There's no sign of any pink granite, Swedish or otherwise, or pilasters or fluting or ironic capitals. And what is that other thing he's always yammering on about? Is it lacobite, larkabite, something like that? Well, there's none of that either. I would say that we're looking at a building here that's about 300, 350 years old. Wow. There is some suspicion that it may have formerly been a ship's chandlery uh, when they were chandlering on this island, which we know they were in the 1600s. Anyhow, I'm going to go and get myself a drink and a bite to eat, and then I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> and in a jarring edit cut i've got my wrap now as well which you get from a separate window over at the side of the pub uh, you, you get the general idea you don't need to see it all do you that's just a quick bit of me eating full of uh, jarring edit cuts this week, uh, but I concluded that you don't need to see me fully uh, devouring a cheese and onion wrap with sweet chilli jam, which is what I've got all over myself uh, here. In terms of the interior of the pub, uh, there's not very much left by way of historic features. Sound uh. a bit like Tweedy pubs, don't I, this week? Um, I think it was given a makeover 20 odd years or so ago, but it's perfectly pleasant. There was just one hand pump beer, uh, an Olverston brewery, but it was as blonde as P P Peter Davison's uh, hair. So I went for mm -hmm. a Moretti instead. The earliest uh, reference we have to any pubbiness happening on the island is pubbiness. a lease of 1746 that was granted to an Edward Postlethwaite. And he was described as the innkeeper of the pile of foundry. Now, foundry refers to the earliest known uh, name for the uh, island, uh, foundry island, which may be Old Norse deriving from uh, fire beacon uh, island. Ah, chili jam on my shirt, never mind. Uh, we then have another <laughs> reference to the inn around about 1800 and an account of 1813, which uh, describes the innkeeper as a Scotch man who has been in residence for many years, supplementing his income by acting as a guide to the castle ruins. Stay tuned uh, for those. And uh, he uh, gives an account of how the sheer loneliness of uh, living here uh, on the island oh, often drove him to the beer barrel uh, for company. 
And then um, we have accounts from the later 19th century of there being a series of boating uh, accidents. People were getting into regattas and uh, that sort of malarkey by that stage. And uh, the innkeeper of the ship in here on Peel Island was being chastised for supplying too much beer to people uh, that were piloting their boats. Is piloting the right term with regards to steering a boat? The only other habitation on the island today is a row of cottages just over there, uh, and they are called pilot's cottages, so I presume it's okay. King of Peel. Each new landlord of the ship inn is crowned in a ceremony which either dates back 537 years or about 170 years, dependent on what you want to believe. The coronation ceremony for the King of Peel largely follows that that we're used to uh, with the uh, crowning of a new English king. And as we saw a year or so ago with uh, Charles III, there's one fundamental difference though. Uh, during the crowning of the King of Peel, they pour alcohol all over his head. And I don't seem to remember <laughs> that happening with uh, Charlie, no. unless I miss something. In another similarity to what I imagine happens in Westminster, behind that mysterious screen with the Archbishop of Canterbury, the new King of Peel has to undertake to be a free drinker, smoker and lover of the female sex. Perhaps uh, unsurprisingly <coughs> then, when Aaron what? Sanderson was crowned the new King of Peel in uh, 2022, he had to see off competition from 200 other applicants vying for the role. It's good to know in this day and age that there are so many free drinkers and smokers and lovers of the female sex uh, still around, I suppose. This ancient <laughs> coronation ceremony so for the King of Peel involves the uh, crowning of a really old metal helmet. Uh, there's a sword and an absolutely fantastic a wooden chair which looks really ancient and that now resides in the pub in between coronations I suppose and it's covered in graffiti and uh, some of that graffiti gives us an indication as to the sort of earliest dates that we know for this ceremony but more on that later. So some believe this ceremony, the King of Peel coronation, dates back to 1487 to be precise. Wow. And that links us to this place here, uh, which is Peel Castle at the end of the island. I love this word. A uh, license to crenulate was issued for this place in 1327. The crenulating monks of Furness Abbey were gifted this location by King Stephen. He of the anarchy in the UK. Uh, they were gifted the abbey on the mainland and this island as well in 1127. Norman cronyism at its best. <laughs> and it's this that became known as the pile of foudry. It was probably originally nothing more than a wool store where the monks, the Savanac monks, stored their wool. Um, but uh, they were really good at smuggling, by the way, those monks. Uh, they avoided the customers' men, even being involved in smuggling alcohol. You just can't imagine anyone of a religious establishment being involved with anything like that today, could you? And I really need to get a move on now, because the last ferry goes at three o'clock. 1487, a band of German mercenaries arrive here, headed up by one Colonel Martin Schwartz. And they arrived here with Lambert Simnel, and uh, it was all part of their plan to seize the crown of England for 10-year-old Lambert. Little Lambert had been uh, crowned in Dublin, and uh, then they set off for England so he could seize the crown from Henry VII. Poor old uh, Lambert's claim to the English throne was originally based upon the idea that he looked uncannily like those princes in the tower, you know, the ones that uh, mysteriously, mysteriously disappeared. Mysteriously disappeared, uh, But that yeah. didn't really hold much uh, water, so they switched. And later on, he claimed to be the Earl of Warwick. Or rather, the people that were looking after him claimed that. <laughs> it seems more likely that uh, Lambert was the son of a joiner or an organ maker from Oxford. 
Anyhow, having set oh, off wow. from here, he was thrashed at the Battle of Stoke Field on the 16th of June, 1487. In reality, poor little Lambert was used by John de la Pole in his attempted Yorkist rebellion. But at least Henry VII showed him some mercy. He gave him a job in the royal kitchens uh, on the spit roast. Some will therefore <laughs> have you believe that the King of Peel ceremony dates back to this event, Lambert Simnel. And so it is time for you to decide. Does this definitely happen? Lambert Simnel definitely came here uh, en route to uh, seize the crown of England. It's documented. We know that happened. But the first written record of the King of Peel crowning ceremony is something like about 1856. I think it's carved on that uh, chair. So there's a bit of a gap between these events. Was it to do with an attempt to seize the crown from Henry VII in the 1400s? Or was it just concocted one night by some drunken Victorians who were a bit bored? You decide. Comments down below. A quirky British oh. anomaly or a load of Victorian balderdash? What do you reckon? Um, it is a sort of a British thing to happen, isn't it? Because an attempted uh, would-be king arrived on this island all those years ago that some uh, of the locals set up this peculiar tradition that uh, the island has its own king. But uh, it could just all be a load of old Victorian mumbo-jumbo. But it's a lovely place nonetheless, and I would recommend a visit, especially on a day like this. But I've got to get back to the ferry because I've got about 10 minutes. Otherwise, I'm going to be stranded on this island and I don't like it that much. <laughs> Careful. There's more people waiting for the last ferry than I think it can take. Go get another pint. Sure you cue. Oh, yeah. I made it. They're going to have to go. Oh, I'm sure he comes back and pick him up. It's interesting, though. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's probably a bit of truth, maybe, with story to, you know, drum up tourism to... So uh, two ladies got left behind, but I managed to get uh, up to the front enough to get uh, on the last ferry back, so I'm okay. I love his videos. Uh, I found that to be very interesting. It's unique. Uh, just he always shows you the unique uh, things about uh, the UK and Britain and as a whole. And it's just, I mean, who here knew of Peel Island and that that they had their own king, who is also the pub landlord. Interesting. Um, and, you know, there's some uh, provenance there with uh, providence uh, with uh, the chair and the helmet and the sword and uh, the castle. I mean, come on. The, I mean, there's a lot of history over there. Now, I don't know about the story of Lambert and wanting to dethrone the king, uh, the 10 year old, and all that business. It's probably a mixture of truth and story, um, but you'll have to let me know what you think. But just, yeah, please go over to his uh, channel. Darren over there is wonderful. I just love, um, I just love his videos. I, I don't know what more I can say. I'm just a fan. I really am. And, you know, it doesn't hurt that he's just a, he's just a great guy. So. Uh, show Darren some love. Get over there. 
click on uh, some of his videos, go down his rabbit hole. He's got tons. He's got a lot. Um, and I know there's a lot of you out there who would find his stuff interesting. So I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, I hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe. Uh, has anybody been here to Peel Island? What a, I mean, one, he had an amazing day, weather-wise. So the boat ride over was probably pretty nice and didn't... <clears throat> I assume there's some tidal, maybe, uh, effect uh, there as well. So it just seems uh, like a cool place to go and have a couple beers and... Uh, check out some a castle and you know and, and it doesn't seem like it would take all day um, other than going to the the uh, ship in and uh, seeing the castle um, and just kind of wandering around doesn't seem like it would take all day to go check it out I wonder uh, I wonder what it would be like to stay the night there I assume you can rent a room and stay the night but, uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's just something that I would never even see. So that's why I love about it. All right, everybody. Uh, have a great day. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye. Mark from the States. Mark from the States. It's Mark.